ਦੇ ਚੁੱਕੇ ਯਾ ਯੂ ਗਾਇਸ ਸ਼ੁਡ ਵਿਜ਼ਿਟ ਦ ਚਾਕਲੇਟ ਹੰਮਰ ਪੇਜ ਰਾਈਟ ਨਾਊ ਸਟਾਰਟਿੰਗ ਦ ਓ ਚਾਕਲੇਟ ਹੰਮਰ ਬਟਸ ਆਈ ਡੋਨਟ ਵਾਂਟ ਟੂ ਵੇਟ ਡੂ ਯੂ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਹੈਵ ਵਿਊਅਰਸ ਆਲਰੇਡੀ ਇਫ ਸੋ ਗੁੱਡ ਮਾਰਨਿੰਗ ਵੈਲਕਮ एवरीवन ਨਾ ਆਈ ਮੀਨ ਆਈ ਹੈਵ ਲਿਟਰਲੀ ਜਸਟ ਸਟਾਰਟਿਡ ਸੋ ਯੈਸ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਅ ਐਕਚੁਅਲੀ ਵੀ ਹੈਵ ਵਨ ਵਿਊਅਰ ਐਂਡ ਆਈ ਥਿੰਕ ਥੈਟਸ ਮੀ ਆਈ ਐਮ ਸ਼ੂਟਿੰਗ ਇਸ ਅਕਾਊਂਟ I wasted a perfectly good good morning. Don't, don't, don't. Does this work? Like do you guys see a proper uh, stream on the I, I, Yes. You should probably leave it there for the streamers to show up so they can be like that's a very pretty background because it is. Yeah. We actually... I see a very annoying ad that is weirdly targeted. That's can please stop talking about Pepsi for a second. <laughs> No, I uh, basically saw an ad for a pool place which is like a couple buildings away from me. That is weirdly targeted. It's bizarrely local. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I wish my I ads made sense. <laughs> That'd be like if the pub started advertising on Google. I mean, I that's where it's getting creepy. Yeah, yeah. That's the way it's heading like Yeah. Uh, I mean, like the mo- most annoying uh, targeted ad that I saw f- for me was that uh, when I bought the tickets for the train from London to Birmingham, I bought them like two weeks before we came to the UK. Mm-hmm. And for the next two weeks, that's all I saw everywhere. Mm. Train tickets from Birmingham to London and back. Yeah. I mean for That's some parts, I, I just mean, I use like I, I just use ad block for most sites. Like unless I whitelist a site. Mm. Otherwise I just use like ad block. Make stuff so it be like it even block blocks most flash ads. I mean you know the the stuff that plays the full for yeah. example. I remember yeah. I could have to, to manually go into my host file and block some of the ads on the escapist that were full screen and would come up over everything and you couldn't close them. Oh my god. Yeah, yeah no, I think yeah, it's better to use ad block because like like the, it like it would usually block all of the stuff. I mean, that's why I sort of like for some places I even like I would like if if there's a way to pay them and then I can be like okay yes now I can use that block my conscious is clean Just give me a way of purchasing your contribution to society Uh I think we probably do have a few a uh, few extraneous viewers at this point as in a few people who are not actually members of Pyrodactyl who are hanging out on the stream. I'll assume that people are not actually bots. Yes. It's okay. We've been doing this for just about a, like about 10 months now. Yeah, it's been, uh, it's been so long. I I imagine most people have already sort of filled their boots with the uh unrest streaming thing. Mm. Yeah, we are the like we are the old thing now. Now somebody like we should just start streaming Goat Simulator or whatever the kids are playing. Now. <laughs> unrest is so good. Yeah, it's just like unrest developers just like, you know, yeah. playing games together. Yeah. Maybe if we if our gig start was today, we could have a tier where we add a goat chapter to the game. Oh. <laughs> oh. Yeah. It's a pity our elephant chapter never got us the same amount of money that Why didn't we make an elephant simulator? Yeah, because like because less we are too busy on stuff like artistic integrity and <laughs> stuff like that, you know. Your nose what? instead of his tongue. We don't have the budget for an elephant simulator. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Had a, had a very strict no elephants clause. Yeah, if we did an elephant simulator, it'd have to have Octodad style like trunk physics. Yeah. I mean I'm pretty sure somebody will at some point because now the simulator genre is sort of like it has reached a kind of 
critical mass in terms of LOL, look at this on YouTube kind of thing. Yeah, and almost none of it's actually simulating the thing it yeah. should be simulating. Yeah, yeah, I mean, like, some of the stuff is, like, actual simulators, like the train simulators and stuff. But now there's so yeah, many people that... who will just buy, like, something called, like, X simulator, ironically, or something. Well, the, the the amount those train simulator things cost and the expansions is mind-boggling. It's like sixty dollars for two trains that don't exist. There's a good reason for that. Um, collecting model trains and stuff is a huge thing in England, so and I'm not surprised there is a market. And it's also really expensive. It's even more expensive than that sixty dollars for two trains. So that, mm. that's that's the people they're targeting. But it's a video game. You think somebody would undersell them, like hard? I think the problem is that, like, uh, with like, not a problem really. A thing is that, like, for example, there's a game called Football Manager. There's people who will yeah. just buy that one game every year and not buy any other game. Like, they're right. not like, okay, I want to play this other game. They're like, okay, I just want to manage a football team. So they'll just buy Football, football Manager. Team. Yeah. So it's a similar thing in that, like, these people probably spend their entire gaming budget on just train simulator. Right. Wow. That's, um, I mean, you know, look, hey, trains are cool, you know? Well, pr pretty I much they're just uh, train. Trains are fine, but, like, that's... They're just people that are really into trains. And that's it. That's, that's what, they probably don't even play almost anything else at all. Yeah. yeah, those games are ripoffs. I'll say that much. I, yeah, I, I saw mean, your episode on, on trains, Rats, and it was. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, killed my. <laughs> yeah, that was, yeah. I think we can all agree that spoiler warning peaked at that episode. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's been downhill ever since. So. It, it was. Like, I, when, the, when the track stopped, where the world stopped and the track kept going, <laughs> so the, the fact that it was literally a one-dimensional game and they ran out of track was just mind-blowing. <laughs> yeah, that was... No, wait. Yeah, I, need to I know you guys are calling the train simulator a rip-off, but those trains still cost less than the tickets. I'm, I'm pretty sure true. some of those trains cost more than the tickets. So what you're saying is I should model, like, actually 3D model these trains and sell them to people who played lots of Train Simulator to afford my real train tickets. <laughs> this is why modding is pretty much dead for Half-Life 2, by the way. It's like, hey, I'm trying to get some people to make a mod for Half-Life 2. Anybody interested in making models? It's like, no, I'm making hats for TF2. Jeez. Yeah. Uh, I never got on that bandwagon. Cool. I should have. Um, you yeah, should have. I mean, at... at at the point where, like, uh, this was about, like, seven or eight years ago now, where me and Les were, uh, like, doing Half-Life 2 mods. So at that yeah. time, there was no Unity, there was no Unreal. So the trajectory was basically, you make a Half-Life 2 mod, and then you, like, either hope that it's but impressive it enough for Valve to say, hey, here's a Source Engine license. Or you, you use it as a portfolio piece to get hired in the industry. Because they, that's why, because they, when I started making my first game, at that point, like coding your own engine was basically the only thing you could do. Because I don't think there was like any, like certainly not like highly polished engines like Unreal or UDK with their documentation and stuff. You're cutting a lot, a lot again, Arvin, just for the record. Did you switch back to your old microphone? Well, I, th I think I think we might just be cutting off on the Google Hangout. Because, Maybe, yeah. Uh, yeah. I, no, I, it's fine for the stream. Yeah, that might be it, actually. Oh, okay. So we'll I just uh, try to piece together what you have said from, like, the every fourth, uh, fourth actual word we hear. <laughs> No, so yeah, what I was saying was that when, like, seven or eight years ago, there was no uh, kind of Unity or Unreal kind of engine. Actually, I think this may be because Google is muting my mic. When yeah, I yeah. Walk. <laughs> Typing. Yeah. What it's about to say, it's like, as soon as you, like, did that exact same speech again, it started cutting out again. It's like, fuck. It was me. waiting for him to start. It was weird. Yeah. I think at this, like, at some point of time, like Google will start censoring dissenting opinions and people will be like, oh, Google Hangout is just like this buggy thing. Yeah. 
I wouldn't like put it past the them. Like, Google Hangout is just and then silence because they they muted that part. Yeah. <laughs> People will be like going to like the actual Google headquarters and nobody will be there. And it's like, how is Google running if nobody works here? <laughs> <laughs> Yep. Well, I think Google's Chrome is Google. Sorry, Google's code is these days created by typing in that hacker simulator. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's, except for if you type in hacker simulator on, on Google Plus, you would never unmute yourself. I mean, I think like at some point, like. Like this could take a really sinister tone because Google just collect is collecting all data. Yep. And like at some point, like the something's gonna come out and everyone is going to be like, yeah, they were misusing your data. But then like yeah, I mean, I, I'm not sure, but yeah, like. But then everyone will forgive them because of Google, and Google will make our email. But... No, I think like at that point, everyone will receive letters from Google saying, "We know this about you, and if you don't want this to get out." <laughs> You will do as we say. <laughs> it's well, like a personal like, blackmailer. They can just turn your internet off. Like there was this event a few years ago when um, Google's virus scanner was going nuts, so it blocked every website on the internet. Yeah, I, I did not actually that know this. Bad. That might be because of the censoring dissenting opinion part. <laughs> It was hilarious because it's like for a week straight, people were, like typing things in Google. Like, not a week straight, like it was just a day, but like people typing stuff into Google and everything is coming up blocked. It's like, hang on a second, I don't know how to use hyperlinks anymore. Oh god. Yeah, no, I, I actually uh, when I was in college, there was a shop which like Xerox notes and stuff for you. So how they would open a URL is that like I told them, okay, go go to for example pyrodactyl.com. They would type pyrodactyl.com yeah. into Google, and then they would yeah, click the first it. link. Yeah. They wouldn't use the address bar. Yeah. And that is like, I imagine how a lot of people use internet. That's how I use the internet. I don't know how to use hyperlinks anymore. <laughs> yeah. Well, not hyperlinks. Yeah, the URL bar. I mean, I, I remember like the internet going absolutely crazy when there was a Gmail outage for like yeah. three, four hours. Everyone was like. Like oh well, okay guys, Gmail beta is over. Like now it's time to start paying up. It was like that, but Google banned yeah. everything on the internet. Yeah. Uh, and by the way, for our listeners uh, and viewers, uh, if you want to ask us any questions about the game and the development, yeah, feel free. We are just sort of uh, like showing you the environments right now. And if you uh, by any chance met us at my met us at res. Or something, and yeah. Do say hi, because everyone yeah. at Rest was really cool. Yeah. Oh, and uh, yeah. I think what we can do is like usually the way I show environments is very kind of disconnected. Don't really do a plot thing. But will there be be an interest in me playing through chapter one as a kind of? Uh, so I'll I'll actually like some amount of. Uh, like I'll play through some amount of the story, might be some spoilers, etc. Oh my god, that is deathly silence. Yes, we were all sitting in silent judgment. <laughs> I think I feel like you were Twitch play Pokemon bots to like type up, up, B, up, up, B, A, B, up, up. <laughs> Twitch plays unrest would actually be fucking hilarious because oh god <laughs> because you know in our game you can't hit a po like a a game over in the traditional sense of like yeah. you died so you stop playing so it would just be them like wandering around choosing random dialogue options and coming off as a complete <laughs> lunatic well that's how fucking <laughs> pokemon played worked yeah you can't I really lose see this actually yeah, yeah, I think that's uh, because the the thing with Pokemon is that if you uh, like, there's ways to completely lose it. But for the most part, if you just sort of keep going in a single direction, you'll eventually like power through the the game. And especially because that Pokemon was like the first. So, mm. but yeah, like it does really like bring into mind that thing. Uh, what do you call the the thousand monkeys and thousand typewriters thing? 
Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. Yeah. Oh, they're on fire red now, are they? This is... Ugh. Yeah, you know, gonna... they actually uh, they actually tried that once. What? Like, they gave, like, a bunch of monkeys typewriters for a <laughs> while. Yeah. They got, like, ten pages of the letter N, and then they threw the typewriters. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, the, yeah, I mean, like the the kind of actual ideal experiment is actually that you just keep on selecting random letters. So you yes. keep on, and then eventually something will happen. Yeah, but then like yeah, that theory opens up to really interesting possibilities because then, for example, like. The monkeys might type a version of Romeo and Juliet where, like, they actually tell each other that, "Hey, I am pretending to die. Don't kill yourself." Yeah. How could this be fan fiction? Yeah, wouldn't it be great if, like, they did had some sort of way of automating that, and suddenly, like, they got something that was like an eighty percent match, and they're like, "Oh, let's take a look at this," and it's like the the ending, but like, the last act is just screaming in pain. You guys are literally talking about, like, a universe where, like, an infinite number of possibilities produce an infinite number of, you know, outcomes, and occasionally an infinite number of the outcomes will be exactly the same as our outcome. Yeah, yeah yes. pretty much. If you like, I actually, yeah. actually know uh, another really messed up version of that thing. Uh, mm. Basically, if you let those random monkeys type that random stuff, you could also make them type programs and then run those programs and see what happens. Yes, if there is some and sort they of... Won't compile. Like, they won't compile for the most part. Well, yeah, for the most part. That uh, Shakespeare stuff won't make sense for the most part as well, because but since it's completely random, some will compile. And <laughs> people have actually discussed this, that you should do that and try to find the actual programs in there which make sense. Try to randomly generate these things. Because yes. that's easy and actually make really complicated programs. Yeah, and, uh, yeah by the way, uh, we just want, were asked a question by Pearl Trizak. Pearl Trizak. Yes. Hola, I might have missed your emails, but can you give me an update on when you intend to ship the game to Kickstarter backers? And I said we are aiming for May dash June. Yeah, so, aim, aiming for. Do not be surprised if it's like July yeah. or possibly yeah. August. But you know that's the the game is like it's it's not in jeopardy at all. It's like very much like where we're 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 working on the last few things. But with game development, you know, it's always like you finish and then you're not really finished. You know, you gotta edit it and revise it and edit it. And oh no, yeah. we discovered a new bug. Yeah. yeah there's, there's, there's a lot of last crashes if the person oh, playing is named Clarence, you know. And like and another another thing with our game is that oftentimes what happens is like even like right now, one hour before the stream, I asked Raskani, what happens if I talk to character A in chapter this and then later talk to character B in another chapter? So that turned out to be a, a like combination of events that might actually affect things. So that means that now Ratskan might have to write additional dialogue to take into account what happened and so on. So yeah, like there's a there's a bunch of stuff. That, but yeah, like it's going as planned. Nothing is really like uh, mm. yeah, no problems really. Just yeah, just like realities of game development. <laughs> If we took longer, I think it would be us just polishing up the game and deciding, yeah. like, oh, well, this was an area people might have got confused about. We'll add more content here, hmm. shore yeah. up this chapter with these additional events, things like that. It would be making the game better, less, more making the game better and less fixing bugs. And, well, there'd be bugs fixed as well, but yeah. never mind that. For the majority, it would be improving the game. Arwen. Yeah. One small note. Uh, no, that's because I have turned them off. Like I did not want the frame rate to be a problem. Oh, okay. I have okay. turned them off. Okay. So, make you wanted yeah. another. Our game has frame. the only uh, is the only game on the market that has a trees checkbox because we have the best trees in the market. 
<laughs> speed tree, eat your heart out. <laughs> this is not speed tree. It does make me wonder in the future what will we get? If we already have speed tree, will we be getting like speed face? What other what other aspect of video game development could be easily outsourced to some sort of middleware? Creativity. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like pretty much anything. I think like with the Unity asset store, for example, you could uh, like basically cobble together a game with a lot of different models and like Wasteland, like uh, Obsidian. No, not Obsidian. In Exile. Yeah, In Exile are. Uh, doing the same thing with Wasteland 2, they have basically commissioned a few, uh, what do you call it? No, not exactly commissioned. The right thing would be that they basically asked fans to uh, make uh, models and stuff for them. And they would pay right. them and then they could yeah, assets, sell those yeah. to others. Yeah. So yeah, like, That's now pretty with cool. the, Although... yeah, now with the like open engines and everything, like you can pretty much uh, do a, get a lot of things done. Uh, elsewhere. I'd probably have concerns about the art style if that was the case, but then again, yeah, the TF2 yeah. one seems to have worked out quite well. I mean, I don't, I won't say the TF2 one has worked out quite well because, I mean... Well, I, I didn't mean in terms of like what they actually made, yeah. because no, it doesn't actually fit the theme, but I mean the actual, like the raw art style, the way they make the textures and things look, usually is pretty good. It's pretty on par with TF2's like yeah. painting style. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's just that they, they make things that don't fit in TF2. Yeah. I mean, TF2 at this point has just kind of become a like a monetization kind of engine. Well, TF2 is always just at that testing ground to get Dota yeah. 2, right? You guys, um... You guys ever, like... Look at Fortress Forever, like the the game that's basically the TF2. Yeah, the game that came out yeah. the exact same day as TF2. Uh, wasn't it a half-life mod or something? Like, <laughs> yeah. It's a free mod yeah. available on Steam, right? Hmm. I think it's a free mod available on Steam. Yeah, it's free mod. Basically, yeah. they it's it's made by people who like think that Team Fortress 2 should have been more like the Team Fortress 2 that was promised in early screenshots, where everyone was wearing fatigues. Yeah. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I like the, the, the basic aesthetic. Like, when it launched, I loved the aesthetic. But I don't yeah. quite like what it has become now. Yeah, like the Deus Ex Human Revolution gear is kind of oh bullshit. Yeah. D Dishonored helmet. I mean, at this point, they just have, like, any, basically, like, any game that, like, that somebody knows that well, like they just like okay, I use them. I mean, like Mickey Mouse would look at Team Fortress Two and say, "Guys, you are overexposing your character." <laughs> mm -hmm. I feel bad for Fortress Forever. They released it at exactly the wrong time, and they couldn't really have waited to do it. Yeah. It would be like if um, if Black Mesa Source released at the same time as like Half Life Two Source, Half Life One, whatever it was called. Hmm. I mean, I would actually like. I mean, like Black Mesa Source is obviously made on a bigger engine and stuff. But like, uh, have they still like fully released the the thing? Like, or like is Black Mesa Source still in development? I think they Gosh. released it. No, I mean it they playable. did, but it was half of the game, right? It doesn't have the Zen levels. Oh, you're right. Yeah, you're right. They haven't done that yet, as far as I know. Yeah, good. So that would be another ten years, because those guys have just taken. But yeah, I mean, it, it's sort of understandable. But yeah, I guess that that oh. mod can roughly be like said as a kind of swan song because no real big mod sort of came after it. Because they, yeah, I. Because like. As what I was saying earlier, people just move to making their own games because that that way they don't have to depend on Valve's permission. Mm. I kind of wish somebody would do that with the Vampire the Masquerade games. Yeah. Still never played those. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Yeah. 
mean, to check Google for a second. I think Amita came online. Yeah. Hang on. Oh, okay. Just okay. okay, let me discreetly try to move that from the first window to the second. Where is it? Oh my god, I just completely moved it to the first window. Uh, <laughs> hello, uh, Amitav, can you hear us? Uh, Looks like his bike is muted. He might not want to be yeah. on the stream. Okay, yeah. there you go. Yeah, there you hey. go. Hey. Oh. Hey, Amita, how's it going? It's going good. Um, sorry for I've been it's kind of a been busy last few weeks. So oh yeah, no problem. Yeah. Uh, Getting ready to move to Japan and everything. So. Oh, that's pretty cool. Uh, wait a minute. Where is that? There's yeah. Uh, no, sorry, because we are kind of st streaming and people can actually hear what you say. Like, Just you so you know. Oh, I, yeah. I'm moving to Russia. I mean, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> good. Uh, <laughs> track me. No. Oh. Okay. What What are the odds Amitov's enemies are all backers of unrest? I, I would it's, say a fairly... It's probably the case. Yeah. 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 This Google Plus call is being recorded for training purposes. <laughs> <laughs> so anyway, uh, have you uh, has uh, have you ever shown this part before? But okay, let, let's show this in. Let's So I'm just kind of like focus for like forcefully not pausing like the story bits too much, just in case like you know for spoilers and stuff. But yeah, yeah. You're just uh, try to, uh, skip all the conversations and get to the action. <laughs> yep. And and yeah, like. Uh, I think the game was pretty, uh, like, we had a great time at rest. I'm still sort of recovering from it, basically. <laughs> but, but yeah, like, that was the first public showing of the game, and I think it was pretty cool. Yeah, rest was awesome. Uh, this is the city area of the game. It's sort of like uh, the city, basically. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, yeah, Ratskan is way better than, at this than me. Way better. Which part? Uh, explaining like the lore and stuff, like you know the background. What's... Yes. Okay. Um, I, I'm sorry. I had to move away for something. What lore are we talking about in specific? No, I was describing the region, like this city. Region. Oh yeah. Oh. Yeah. This is sort of the. Um, well, this area here is kind of like a striping uh, along the outskirts of the slums, where it's like somebody's got to live there. Because the slums are actually like not really legitimate, like civically planned part of the city. They're mostly just like sort of set up along the outskirts, and the people here aren't super happy to be living within like a walking distance of this hive of scum and villainy. But they're not rich enough to move. Is basically the situation. And some of them like a hive full hmm? of slum and villainy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh. <laughs> I'm I'm too sleepy to have made that myself, I guess. Yeah. But yes. Uh, no. Anyway. Um. So yeah. The you as you can see here, you can doesn't take a lot of walking to move straight from, uh, you know, fairly nice houses and people to, not very nice houses and people. Yeah. Uh. Okay. Have we, like, is there a bug or something? Because I, I thought this guy is supposed to have some lines. Creature man. Yes. Man. <laughs> yeah, check that out. Like, yeah. I shall. The good part about a live stream is that you can't tell if the people watching are laughing uproariously at your puns or staring in stony eyed silence. <laughs> yeah, uh, I think I, I, just I, I dropped know. from nine viewers to seven. So, yeah, that was I think good. that's good. Wow. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. It was so good that like a couple people popped into the stream just to go, what? <laughs> what? What happened? I quick, felt quick. energy. 
<laughs> there was a pun being made. <laughs> yes. So, uh, yeah, any questions? Because we usually don't go this long without questions. Yeah, I mean, you know, hey, it's the end times. Yeah. Amitav, do you have any questions? Nope, his mic's muted again. No, no questions for us. Good God. Well, I will say Chapter 3 has more events than any other chapter by, I think, an order of magnitude. Yeah. Yeah. Which is uh, really fun when we're trying to debug. I actually have not played Chapter 3 yet. Like, I haven't had time. I've been too busy writing Chapter 5. Yeah. It's huge, enormous. Yeah. yeah. It's pretty big, yeah. There's lots, lots of... I mean, look at the map markers. It's just all over the place. Well, I mean, I, I know Chapter 3 probably took longer to write than... Okay, uh, technically Chapter 1 took longer to write, but that's because I had to write Chapter 1, like, four different times. Because uh, we kept... The design document kept changing in the early days, like, as the Kickstarter was... Yeah. Like, before the Kickstarter and then afterwards. Yeah. So, no, but that was... that was um, So I think probably I've spent a little more time with Chapter 1 than Chapter 3, but it's it's close run. I don't think we ever wrote dialogue for that guy. Hmm. I think I think I discussed the dialogue of that guy at some point with you, certainly. Uh, hmm. I do wonder it's Khan because like isn't that guy supposed to be like off duty and then like because he he's like doing giving a kind of major speech thing in chapter two. So then he's yeah. supposed to yeah. So now he's just on his cigarette break, I guess. Yeah. I mean, like, he, okay. he's kind of, like... I'll make it out of this. Yeah. He's kind of off-duty, and, like, he... Uh, like, you talk to him from the, kind of, the other side of the... Spec, uh, like... What do you call that? Authority, I guess, because... The, the, the person you're playing in Chapter 2 is the... Is in the faction that's against the faction here. Yes. And now he's like, you can't trust the system. Wait, hold on. That guy, um, that's the guy who's like teaching the kids, right? Yeah. Yes. Yeah, okay. Just make sure. Because, you know, there's the other, like, guy who we refer to, like, as the preacher evangelist guy who's, like, handing out, who'll hand out the pamphlet to Bogwan in this chapter. And I have written that dialogue. Yeah, that's done. Uh, the pamphlet itself doesn't have any text, but that's the only, I think, the yeah, only part of chapter three. That's, that's on my to do list. Uh, and yeah, Otherwise, then I think everything else is done. Yeah. And another thing as well, uh, I think uh, we mentioned that this couple right here, these two, they need to be, uh, like, they need to discuss the wedding in the village. So, like, depending on the outcomes, if the, if the wedding goes well, they are like, oh, yeah, we were in a very nice wedding. And it's nice to see, like, even in these dark times that, like, you know, Mm. Yeah. And then, like, if something wrong happens, then they are supposed to reflect that with the priest and ask him for his opinion. Yes. Spoilers? Well, not really, actually. Yeah. It's really weird because you have to do this verbal kind of dance to avoid spoilers. <laughs> spoilers, it's actually the Red Wedding. We are George R.R. <laughs> R. Martin. <laughs> If we just had like our standard meeting uh, in front of you, the, the audience, that would be amusing because we would have to do some real uh, yeah. hot stepping. <laughs> some real cloak and dagger phrases. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we got anything else? Nope. Uh, 
yeah, okay, we will, I guess, stream for another five minutes. And if anyone has any questions, then... Okie doke, last call. Submit a bid. We are happy to talk words that you specifically request in some kind of order. Yeah. Shouldn't, like, when this wealthy woman says priest, shouldn't there be a reply saying Rex or something? Yeah. <laughs> I think I actually wrote that one in. <laughs> If not that one, then I definitely remember writing a soldier's response that was just, Sir. Well, well I think, yeah. I guess that's okay. it. I think that's it. Uh, and yeah, thank you for watching the on the stream thing this month. And yeah, I think next month you will actually see a whole new chapter. And we'll probably talk a little bit more about our release plans and stuff like that. So yeah, thanks for watching. How do I, how do I stop the stream again? <laughs> I don't know.